Well, I'm really excited for you to meet our next guest. Uh, Gail McWilliams is here with us, and she's an author. She's an international speaker and a radio host. Um, her, uh, her, her, her national radio feature, Seeing Beyond with Gail McWilliams, is just amazing. It, it'll inspire you. I can't wait for you to hear her story. She's got a few books. One is called Seeing Beyond, another Engaging the Heart, and B12, Doses of Encouragement. Uh, she was actually given the first Hope for Life Award by the Justice Foundation. Please meet my friend, Gail McWilliams. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Well, what a joy to team with you. Oh, well, it's been so nice getting to know you and, uh, and your husband who's here. And it's so great to have a husband and wife couples who are here. Albert and, and Deidre and you and your husband are here. And um, I wish my wife was here and we could... You know, we could all sit around and talk about marriage and kids and all of this, but you have such an interesting story, and most people have no idea uh, about your story, and um, they'll be amazed when, 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 when they learn what you've gone through. Would you just briefly share with us what's well, gone on? When I was younger, I was told that I would never have any children, and my husband and I married 36 years ago, and we wanted children. We knew they were gifts from the Lord, but it seemed like an impossibility. But God blessed us with four daughters and a son. Yeah. I love it. You know the small print that says, um, just practicing medicine. Yes. Well, that's what happens with the doctors. And the great physician had another idea. But Kirk, I've got to tell you that my husband and I wanted a family, but God wanted a story for this hour. Because it was in the middle of having our children that actual darkness came to our home. I was pregnant with our second born when the doctors came in one day and they noticed a pattern that was happening in my eyes. And they said, Gail, you have to choose today between your baby or your eyes. I said, the choice is made, I choose my baby. The doctor stood up, slammed shut my folder and said, what a foolish decision. And he left the room. When he left the room, I sat alone. I knew I'd made the right decision, but I had no idea the consequences. I had no idea how steep a climb could be and how deep a valley could be, or that there were different levels of darkness. But I remembered a verse that I'd memorized as a young girl, and it said, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life that you and your descendants might live. And that became my compass that day, my peace. It also became not only all of those things, but my anchor. And the great news is the daughter I carried that day is our only married daughter so far, and she and her husband have given to us three grandchildren. That's so great. <laughs> and what I tell people, what I tell people is that we must have a vision for generations yet to come. Kirk, life is the gift. And for all of us, life has cost something. Uh, life that you and I know in Jesus Christ, it, it costs God's son. Uh, when I think about life itself, he, he puts abundance with it. He's come to give us abundant life. But life costs something. And, and we're living in a day where it seems like it's the day of uh, throwing away and devaluing life. But life is a gift. It was God's design, God's desire. And so many times people ask me, Gail, why would you do it? If you knew you were going to lose your eyesight, why would you go on to have more children, four daughters and a son. And I tell people, are you really asking me why would I choose convenience over legacy? Legacy will win hands down every time. Mm. So you had to choose uh, to either uh, have healthy children or progressively lose your eyesight. Right, and 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 you have five children, and uh, you have completely lost your eyesight. I have. I was the parent that rode with the kids when they got their driver's license. You know, I never saw the tree either. It didn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> My husband was a nervous wreck. You know, I've had some awkward moments along the way. I've I've walked out with the wrong man before. I've gotten in the wrong car. I've corrected the wrong children. I've talked to people who aren't even there. And I've reached out to touch people and I've touched the wrong body parts. You know, very awkward. But I keep reaching. And in the middle of all the heartache, I could tell my story tonight and, 
in different ways where we'd all be sobbing. There's nothing more devastating than not to see the faces of your children. But sometimes it's a gift. <laughs> sometimes I, I, don't see, I don't see the attitude. What I see is the potential. See, Kirk, this is what I found, that most people live life based only on what they see. There's so much more. It's about vision. And when you have vision, you can see in the darkest places of life. When you see life... <laughs> When you see life only based on what the natural eyes can see, it will always be limited, definitely discouraging and disappointing. But when you see life with the eyes of hope, listen, hope always sees. You know, I was that little kid that never liked to go to bed at night when I was growing up. And finally, my parents would win. They were like my bodyguards. And they would escort me to my room, put me in the bed, and say, at least you're going to rest. They'd turn out the light, close my door, and then they'd leave. I had a time to a science. I knew when they weren't coming back, then I would jump up on my mattress and it became my platform. I would take my, my hairbrush, turn it upside down. It was my microphone. And every night I would travel with Bob Hope to encourage the troops all around the world. <laughs> and I'm living the dream. I'm here tonight to encourage the troops on the front lines of life to say, get back into life. Most people just survive, they just exist. But there's so much more to be engaged and living in every day. Choosing life is a choice every day. Somebody asked me the other day, Gail, how can you have so much joy and you can't see? I said, how can you see and have no joy? <laughs> it's a choice. Boy. <laughs> I like I'm the afraid, beard, I'm by afraid the way. to ask you a question now. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 I, but I have to know, anyone who's watching this says, could I, could, if I was in her shoes, how, would I have that kind of an attitude? Gil, where does that come from? Well, first of all, it's his grace. The truth of the matter is, Kirk, when I started losing my eyesight, so devastating. This is not what I had planned for my life. This was not my agenda. And I remember a particular morning when the children and Tony had left. And um, I went to the bedroom and I laid on the floor and I buried my head in the carpet crying for hours till I had no more tears. I was struggling with disappointment and fear. I was struggling with anger. I didn't know how I was gonna go on. How could I ever be the wife my husband needed? How could I ever be the mother my children needed? And for sure, who was ever gonna call on me to carpool? You know, it wasn't going to happen. And as I laid there on the floor and cried and cried and cried till I came to the end of myself. And then I stood up in the room and I was emotionally, spiritually, and physically spent. And what I remember vividly was Psalms 56. It said, Lord, you saw me when I was tossing and turning in the night. Every tear I've ever cried, you kept in your bottle. But when I called on the name of the Lord, the tide was turned. All my enemies began to flee for this one thing I know. You are for me. And it wasn't like I had all the answers. It wasn't like I knew what to do from that point. But it began the journey of stepping out of all that sorrow and grieving of what I didn't have and finding his grace to focus on what I did have. And even today, that has to be my choice. I'd give anything to see you in that, that beard you're sporting. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, I see you as a man of destiny who's made an impact in our world. So many people look up to you, Kurt. Well, I, I just, I love what you're saying. You're saying, uh, when you, you said, hope always sees. Yeah. You said vision allows you to see in the darkest of places. Um, how do people, if, if, if someone is, whether they're losing their eyesight or maybe they've lost a child or maybe they've lost a job or maybe they feel that they're going through periods of darkness, how do they find hope? How do they find vision? I mean, you seem like such a, an anomaly, you know, su such, a, such a unique and rare breed of person. Uh, how do they find the hope that you have? Well, first of all, I'm an ambassador of hope. And the greatest news ever that we can tell anyone today is that hope is a person. His name's Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
right. You know, I'm a woman of hope. I travel with my car keys. I keep my car keys in my purse. And people may say, that is the craziest thing. Why would you keep your car keys in your purse? I'm a woman of hope because hope's always expectant. Expectant that there's going to be a turnaround, whether it's a physical breakthrough or a miracle. I don't care. But when it does come, guess what? I'm back on the road. Now, I might need to borrow your car <laughs> to find my car. But this is what I ask. What do people, what do you hold, Kirk, in your hand that engages you in hope? All of us have some kind of obstacles, some kind of barriers that we have to see beyond. And I am simple enough to believe that the Lord said, call upon me and I will hear you. He's near to all who call. Call. He is the one who not only gives hope, he is hope. And as you just said, a line that I often say, I'm still traveling with hope because hope always sees. And if there's one message that we can tell people tonight and to encourage them is this, that life is a gift. You were born on purpose, with purpose, for a purpose. You've right. been given this time in history. And I wouldn't want to be in this time in history without one hope and the other without his grace. That's so true. We need, we need to hear that and we need to encourage each other, one another with that the way that you are tonight. We need to teach that to our kids. We need to, we need to, to, to share that with our, our spouses. We need, the world needs hope, right? I mean, we, the world needs peace, the world needs hope. Absolutely. And ultimately peace and hope are a person. And that person is Christ. Absolutely. And um, Gail, uh, are you working on a special project right now? I am. I'm working on a brand new book. Very excited about it. You know what? You'll probably be in it. In fact, I think I've got a new campaign started. It says, uh, I'm in Gail's book. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be in your book. And, and what's, the, what, what's this new book going to be all about? Well, I'm going to talk about the idea that most people feel like they're stuck in life. But you know what? When you understand that you're not stuck, but you've been positioned, guess what? Your whole life will turn around because every moment counts. Everything you're doing today is in preparation for what's coming tomorrow. You're not stuck. You've been given this time. We've been given this hour to steward. Why don't we show up for it? You know, I told you when we were talking in the green room that I wanted to tell you a story. I don't know. Yes. You can tell me. Do we have time? This is perfect time. Okay. Well, I think this sort of says it all. You know, I love to speak. I speak around the nation and internationally. I love to encourage people. My dearest friend, he wrote the foreword of my first book, Zig Ziglar. He said, when you have a word of encouragement, you'll always have something to give someone. It'll always be timely. Well, here's the story. Not long ago, a friend called me and she said, Gail, I have a gift for you. I was so excited because she knows me well. She knows perfume's my favorite. And I thought, this is going to be perfume. She said, I want to take you to the movies. Kirk, literally, I moved the phone from my ear. I looked heavenward, heavenward and said, God, are these the only friends you could bring me? <laughs> Who would take me to the movies? <laughs> well, anyway, and it wasn't yours, by the way, that day. Uh, so <laughs> I said, OK, I'll go with you. And she said, no, you're going to love it. Lots of dialogue. So she picked me up, and we went to the movies. And sure enough, I cried all the way through this sad, sad movie. What a sad gift. And when it was all finished, I reached out to take her arm to help me up the aisle where I could find my way. And when I stepped into the corridor of this large theater in Dallas, I moved over to the side and I was just standing there and trying to get myself back together. Just as she leaned over to me and said, I need to go to the restroom, do you? And I said, no, that's okay. I said, you go on. She said, are you sure? I said, I'll be fine. You go on. I'm just going to get myself back together. She said, okay. So she left and I just stood there and blowing my nose and wiping the tears from my eyes and trying to figure out, you know, what I was doing the rest of the day. And I perceived that I might be in the way of people. So I stepped back two big steps and I stepped over two big steps to get out of the way and no friend. I stood there for a long time and nobody came. So I thought, well, I'm here. Why not? I started greeting people. Hello. Hi. Have a good day. <laughs> And after many moments, my friend finally came back and said, Gail, what are you doing? You're standing in the men's restroom. Oh, no. Uh, even stores have greeters. My goodness. You know? 
and and this is what I think. I think, you know, people have told me before, oh, I've done that before. I've gone to the wrong restroom. Yeah, but you didn't stay there forever greeting everyone, you know? <laughs> but here's the deal. Most people don't know where they are. Still occupy the moment. You will find your way in time, but engage in living in that moment. Make the most of it. Make a difference. And always, always choose life on a daily basis. Gail, um, we just, just have another minute, but uh, I just saw the way that uh, you and your husband uh, were backstage and, and, and just the way that you were with each other. Uh, what's, what's one thing that you love most about your husband? Well, first of all, his name is Tony McWilliams. He set our family on the course that day when he said, we will not retreat. I think a lot of people give up anymore. And uh, he's a man that hasn't. He's a man that's been anchored in the word. He's loved me. He's loved our children. It's made a difference. But you know what most ministry is, Kirk? It's just showing up. It's just honoring each other. And I'm very grateful for a man of God who's loved me and loved our children in spite of the obstacles. Life isn't for quitting, even if there's a dark spot. So I'm grateful. I'm just grateful that he loves me. And guess what? He still looks great to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you are such a bright and shining light. And I thank, thank you for you. being here with us tonight. And thank sharing you, your story. my joy. Thank you. All right.